New numbers show low voter turnout heading into the final early voting days for Travis County. What that could mean for local candidates. The Austin airport may be busy, but you can still get through security in just minutes. More on why there has been record high traffic. How the UT women's basketball team is gearing up for the new season. Reporting Texas TV starts now. Good evening, I'm Madeline Salinas. And I'm Shazan Samanani. Travis County is seeing fewer early voters for the midterm elections than in previous years. This year's midterms is down 9% compared to those who voted early in the last midterms. However, St. Edward's professor, Brian Smith, says figures from the 2018 midterms were more of an anomaly rather than normal. So there aren't a lot of competitive races also to draw more voters out. And without that big, high-profile, exciting Senate race between two candidates, Ted Cruz, Beto O'Rourke, just not drawing the voters. Texans can still get out the vote early today and tomorrow. Election Day is on Tuesday, November 8th. Travis County says officials say about six of the election workers received an in-person de-escalation training before early voting started. The county paid $4,900 to a company called Tactical Training Academy to train election workers. The trainings are meant to help them learn how to handle different situations, including disruptive people coming to the polls. A 16-year-old Maynard High School student is in critical condition after he was shot in the head Monday. The victim, Adam Guillen, is the cousin of Vanessa Guillen, a soldier murdered at Fort Hood. Austin police haven't said what led up to the shooting. So far, we know another teen was shot at the P. Terry's on Highway 71 in the middle of the day, but was treated and released. He's only 16 years old, and uh, he has a whole life ahead of him. Uh, you know, college, kids, marriage life, and just to see him in, in that bed is, is just heartbreaking. Police are still searching for the person responsible. There's a new program on campus helping students fight the stress and anxiety of school. It's called the Longhorn Share Program and it's expanding. Cecilia Rodriguez joins us live in the studio to tell us how the program is helping students on campus. The Longhorn Share Project is stressing the importance of self-care as the grind of the semester continues for students. With the fall semester in full swing, a new project on campus aims to help students through mental health by turning to their peers. The newly established Peer Support Specialist Program offers one-on-one -on -one services with students trained to actively listen and ask questions to help students through a situation. The idea is, you know, if you're just kind of going through it right now and you just want to vent to somebody, there's a person literally waiting for them to come talk to uh, who will not see them as a burden and who will also have more of an understanding of what their experience is kind of like. All without assuming they want advice. Finding, you know, a one-on-one -on -one specialist who is also in that position can be very validating. Um, it can calm some of that anxiety knowing that someone else is in that boat with you and that you're not alone. Academic stress and anxiety is a leading issue in college students. Around 7% of students report symptoms of anxiety, while others remain undiagnosed, according to UT's Counseling and Mental Health Center. When invited by professors into classes, providing support to students in a group setting. We go into classes and we break into small groups and we help them discuss what their warning signs are, how to catch them, what we can do to um, alleviate some of that academic stress during the terms and finals. The peer support program has 28 specialists that meet weekly and are available to all students without an appointment. I feel like there's a lot of healing and empowerment that comes when you can enter a non-judgmental and a non-hierarchical place of students who get it. The SHARE program also provides weekly support groups with different focuses that are open to all. To join or learn more about the Longhorn SHARE project, visit the link at reportingtexas.com. On Tuesday, Austin Energy customers saw a $15 monthly increase on their electric bill. The extra cost is an effort to keep up with the rising price of natural gas, up 100% since last year. The original proposal was a $20 increase, but Austin City Council voted to spread out the hike over three years. Experts recommend lowering thermostats during the cooler months to help offset the higher price. If you're heading to Zilker Park, be sure to hide your valuables or just leave them at home. According to Austin Police, reports of theft and property crimes at most Austin parks have been on the rise throughout the past year. 
Police say this problem has worsened because of staff shortages and the Parks Police Unit permanently shutting down in 2020. Members of the Public Safety Commission and the Parks and Recreation Board are working together to make parks safer. Came to this unit in 2014 uh, and uh, I've been here since then and, I, and I've seen it, you know, gradually getting worse. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, we have a lot more of it, a lot more folks here in town now. So, Police recommend calling 311 if your car is broken into. Enrollment is down at Austin Community College's criminal justice program following a nationwide trend for police departments. ACC report that over 300 fewer students are enrolled in the program this year compared to 2019. They, saw the, they say the program allows those interested in law enforcement to prepare right out of high school, as you need to be at least 21 to go to the police academy. Do you have the opportunity to go into the academy? You already have that chair time and you've shown that you can learn either a lecture or hands-on. Faculty at the school say graduates of the criminal justice program can also pursue careers in corrections and forensics. UT is celebrating first-generation college students with events all next week. More than 20% of UT undergrads are the first of their families to attend a university. And last fall, a record-breaking number enrolled here at the 40 Acres. Events starting Monday include first giving, mindfulness workshops, a graduate student panel, and a campus-wide celebration on Thursday. There are many other events which you can check out at firstgeneration.utexas.edu. Coming up, how Austin's favorite costume store celebrated its final Halloween season. And rainy weather to accompany your Friday night plans. Being the new face of Don't Mess With Texas comes with a lot of responsibility. I think I'm settling in quite nicely. Oh, thanks. Everybody loves me here. I've worked here for so long, all my life. I can't wait to go home. Yeah, this is the boss. Oh, no, 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 get rid of all the trash. Don't mess with Texas. I just want to help keep Texas clean. And maybe spice some things up around here. I don't know how, how we can do this. Daryl, somebody give me Daryl the barrel, please. I'll never litter, Joe. Don't mess with Texas means don't litter. Let me try that again. Mr. Rhodes. Here to keep you safe on these roads. What did I do wrong? Two words. Cross walk. Oh. Whoa! But first, say hello to my little friend. The walk signal? The crosswalk. The signal. Look left, look right, look left. Doesn't it look good in stripes? My love for this place is as deep as the smoky flavor of a Texas brisket. I love the elbow room. I love how easy friendships come. I built my life under this Texas sky, but hurricanes and floods have hit us hard, and they say more storms are coming. My strength keeps me going. My flood insurance helps me stay. This is the great state of Texas, and I'm here for the long haul. Protect your corner of the world with flood insurance. A local newspaper has filed a lawsuit against Texas State University after a public records request was denied. The Caldwell Hayes Examiner asked the school for data on which students were being disciplined for having marijuana. The school refused to give them the information, citing that the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act protected their decision. The newspaper is investigating whether more students of color are suspended or expelled in recent years for using pot. About 1.6 million Texas households receiving SNAP benefits will be getting a little more money to help pay for food this month. That's according to an announcement from Governor Greg Abbott on Tuesday. The Federal Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program helps low-income families and individuals buy food. All households receiving assistance will see at least $95 added to their accounts by the end of November. If you're already looking to buy a turkey for Thanksgiving, you might notice a smaller bird with a higher price tag. That's because of a turkey shortage this year. According to the CDC, the avian bird flu has killed more than 8 million turkeys, raising the price about 28% compared to last year. 
Your Thanksgiving turkey could also be smaller because turkeys being raised right now might not have enough time to grow for the holiday. And with holiday travels around the corner, Austin Bergstrom International Airport saw record-breaking travel last week. But airport lines never went over 30 minutes. Sloan Wick is in the newsroom to tell you how airport officials are working to keep it that way. Thanks, Madeline. The airport has seen more traffic than ever this year. Passenger totals are up 75% compared to last year. I had the chance to visit the airport and see the crowds for myself. Fastest check what we got right here. I'm getting off the plane, it was packed. And usually on the other side, it's not as crowded. Um, but you could not walk. I mean, literally, from wall to wall, it's people coming and going. Sylvia Bova is a frequent traveler through Austin Bergstrom International Airport. On this day, she is one of over 43,000 people departing. Normally, this number is between 20 and 30,000, but the lines are moving quickly. From the time travelers grab their bags and walk through the airport doors, it's only about seven minutes until they're through TSA. This is the second time the airport has broken its travel record within a week, so they were prepared. One of the things that we did is make sure that we have additional staff. It's all hands on deck. Everybody took a shift. The airport also added more signs and moved the line dividers to guide travelers to help the lines move quickly. The reason for the increased traffic, Formula One, ACL and pandemic travel restrictions. People are tired of being told they couldn't travel. And lockdown has really made people want to travel more. But we don't foresee it going down anytime soon, these levels of travel. But for Bova and many others like her, braving the traffic is worth it. Being able to go different places, meet people, see my family. Um, travel is always something that I think is really important for everybody in their life. Thanksgiving is the next potential record-breaking day for the airport. If you want more information on what the airport is doing to prepare, check out this story on reportingtexas.com. Lucene Disguise celebrated its last Halloween and is set to close its doors later this year. The costume shop on South Congress has been in business for 38 years. The closing was announced in August, but store manager Jeff Durham says the Halloween season was not as busy as past years. There's no set closing date, but Durham estimates it could happen in December. Coming up, new faces join the UT women's basketball team. What Texas fans can look forward to this season. And what temperatures to expect as you prepare for your weekend plans. The City of Austin Housing and Planning Department has grant programs that can ease some of the financial stress of owning a home. Whether you need better accessibility in or around your home, have major structural repairs like foundation, roofing, or even electrical issues. These programs may help you stay in your home and make it safer for everyone in your family. You, your neighbors, and your neighborhood are all part of what makes Austin uniquely Austin. Austin is your home. Visit austintexas.gov. Austin is my home. Wondering what happens to the plastic you put in your blue cart? When you recycle at home, we take the recyclables to a sorting facility. That facility sells them to other companies that turn them into new products. This America Recycles Day, keep Austin recycling. It doesn't matter what you drive. You're not above the law. Drivers and passengers. Click it or ticket. More than 500 million pieces of litter are thrown onto Texas highways and beaches each year. But if every person in Texas picked up just two pieces of trash each month, our roads would be litter free in one year. And we need to take care of our coastline and marine life too. Please join Adopt a Beach and help keep our state's 367 miles of beach trash free. Let's all do our part to keep trash off our roads and beaches. Don't mess with Texas and Adopt a Beach, keeping Texas beautiful for 30 years.
Well, I guess Halloween isn't completely done with us yet because it seems like the weather is still giving us some tricks and treats. Texas always gives us the most unpredictable weather. You'll leave in the morning in a t-shirt and shorts, and you'll have to bring a sweatshirt and sweats just in case. That's right, and this week is no exception as we look like we are headed into a, whirl we a whirlwind of a week with weather once more. But let's go ahead and just start by taking a look outside. The sky is looking a gloomy gray color, and the wind is certainly picking up, so it is starting to feel to look like fall, but it doesn't feel like fall for most people out here today. We are witnessing a high of 86 and a low of 72, which isn't bad, but what we really want to focus on here is the rain. Scattered thunderstorms are expected to develop overnight with winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. That unfortunately isn't changing throughout the week. As you can see, Friday is going to be having even more scattered thunderstorms throughout the night. So make sure you get ready for lots of umbrellas and perhaps driving your car instead of walking place to place. Throughout the week, we are going to see even more of these weather whirlwinds. Um, we are going to have thunderstorms all day Friday. So maybe some canceled football games. Saturday, we're going to go ahead and see some better weather sunny skies all throughout the weekend and then Monday we go right back into those thunderstorms um, with nothing but partly cloudy skies highs of 80s and lows of 60s throughout the week but it's definitely going to be one of those maybe an umbrella maybe not an umbrella who knows well I'm definitely glad it's gonna clear up at least this weekend because it's been a long week for me and I just want to go to Zilker and just have like a really good time. It'll <laughs> definitely be a good weekend for a picnic, be the first picnic of the month. Mother Nature is giving us just the weekend though as next week it's going to be back and forth with weather once again. Right. After the break, how Austin SC will have the opportunity to bring home the CONCACAF Champions League trophy next year. Got a favorite author? If you're lucky, you just might be able to meet them this weekend. We'll tell you how later in the show. Hey, Gwen posted her new dessert online. Mmm, that is so good. Look, you gotta look at it. It's your finest work. Talk or text later. No, Don't this, let your this, phone this drive you. Next time, I am turning you off. Mm, yum, yum, yum. That's good. Drive too fast, and someday you'll see the light. Speeding can cost you time, money, and hassle. License and insurance, please. It's just not worth it. Be safe. Drive smart. Ooh, Lauren invited you to play Critter Town. It's that game with all those cute animals. But like this guy. Look at him. Talk or text later. Don't let your phone drive you. No, I'm driving here. You'll have to remain unloved. In Texas, it's illegal to pick blue bonnets, right? Wrong. This is merely a rumor concerning our beloved official state flower. While there's no law that forbids you from picking these flowers, it might be illegal or unsafe in some situations. First, be courteous and take care of the flowers that so many Texans enjoy. Some are annuals that won't recede if they are picked or trampled. Never trespass on private property and don't damage or destroy rights of way, like digging up large clumps of flowers or driving into a field of wildflowers. Finally, remember that it is against the law to pick, cut, or destroy any plant life at Texas state parks, including blue bonnets. Wildflower season will be here soon. These treasures attract many visitors each year, and you can find them across the state. So get outside, be safe, and enjoy. Good evening, I'm Taryn Jones with your sports update. There are a lot of new faces and additions to this year's Texas women's basketball squad. Ethan Ferguson is live in the studio after going to their scrimmage to get a first-hand look at the new team. Being the number three team in the nation this year, Texas women's basketball fans have high hopes for a team who's reached the Elite Eight two years in a row. Potentially, y'all, we have four kids that started off and on last year back. 
And then you also have four potential starters out of the portal. Vic Schaefer, the Texas women's basketball head coach, has high expectations of success from four players who transferred to Texas this year. Sonia Morris, one transfer from DePaul, has shown impressive offensive skills. I just think it was the best option for me. You know, so many doors open going into the portal, and I never thought that this opportunity would come. The team had the opportunity to not only scrimmage each other, but also an all-male practice squad made up of skilled UT students. I mean, they've been talking about this for a while. The first time uh, the public can, like, See how the girls are playing, uh, especially in Moody. Pretty awesome atmosphere. This scrimmage was free and open to the public, and tickets for their upcoming exhibition against DePaul will help fund the rebuild of Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas. In some small way, if we could help the healing, you know, we want to be a part of that. The Longhorns are one of three NCAA Division I women's basketball teams that have a representative on each position of the awards watch list. They're veterans, they've been to the wars, they know what it's about, I don't think they get rattled or shook, and, um, and so I think all of them bring something to the table that we need. Their season is set to start at home on November 11th against L.A. Lafayette. The Longhorns defeated DePaul in their charity exhibition 105-62. to The amount of money that was raised for Robb Elementary in Uvalde has yet to be released. Longhorn running back Bajan Robinson continues to run his way to Longhorn greatness. Robinson was named a finalist for the Maxwell Award, given to the most outstanding college football player. He leads the Big 12 in rushing and is second in touchdowns. Robinson is the first Longhorn to be nominated twice, and if he wins, would be the fifth Longhorn to receive the award. Despite losing in the MLS playoffs, Austin FC earned a spot in the CONCAF Championship League. LAFC Philadelphia Union, Orlando City SC, Vancouver Whitecaps, and Austin FC will represent MLS as the four American and one Canadian team in the tournament. It begins in March and runs concurrently with the MLS season. Yeah. Well, I know that we just came off of a really bad loss against OK State. We came up just short, but we do have a game coming up this Saturday against Kansas State in Manhattan, right, Ethan? Yeah, we do. And, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting because, you know, coming off of the bye week and going up against Kansas State, who just blew out Oklahoma State last week 49 to nothing, you know, it's going to be a challenge for the Longhorns moving forward, but, you know, I think they got what it takes. For sure. And then, you know, looking forward towards basketball as well, uh, their season set to start Monday at 7 p.m. against UTEP here in Austin at the Moody Center. Definitely going to have to try and stop by. After the break, how a landmark mural was restored with new additions reflecting Austin today. And find out where Austin ranks as one of the nation's millennial hotspots. You make tons of choices every day. Things like what to wear, what to eat, or what music to listen to. But this choice is the easiest, and it can make a big difference in your family's health. It's choosing water over sugary drinks. Drinking lots of sugary drinks can lead to serious health issues like obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and cavities. Choose water. It's your health, your choice. Choose what's best for you and your family. I'm encouraging everyone this holiday season to stay home while still making memories. Así que este año yo me quedo en casa. Los abrazos y besos es bien el año que entra. I know a lot of y'all are struggling with canceled holiday plans. Usando nuestra mascarilla, manteniendo el distanciamiento social y evitando congregaciones. And I'll be able to keep my kids close in my thoughts all day long. Hay que esparcir amabilidad y no alcohol. Many of Austin's families have been financially impacted by COVID-19, making it difficult to pay rent. The City of Austin Rent Assistance Program is for Austin renters with low income who've been affected by COVID-19 
and cannot pay their rent. The program's been greatly improved. It now offers more assistance for those who need help paying their rent. Now is the time to apply. We are here to help you. Along with all tech companies coming into Austin, thousands of millennials from all around the U.S. now call the city home. Drawn in by Austin's economy and quality of life, the city is now the top destination for people between the ages of 25 to 29. Smart Assets' latest study reveals Austin had a net migration of over 10,000 millennials, according to 2021 Census Bureau data. That's 10,000 more people who can attend this year's Texas Book Festival here in Austin this weekend. One of the most striking things about the festival is the range of authors on schedule for the 27th edition. Young or old, colored or not, interested in fantasy or cookbooks, the festival promises to have something for you. In addition to having this annual festival, we are a year-round nonprofit, and a lot of our outreach programs are bringing children's authors into Title I schools and the Texas Book Festival gives them books. If you've never been make plans to attend the festivals, let crawl through restaurants and bars on the east side this Saturday. For exact locations and times and authors, check out texasbookfestival.org. For out-of-town guests at the festival, something else you might want to see while in Austin is the newly restored mural on 23rd Street close to the University of Texas. The painting, which shows Stephen F. Austin as the city's patron saint, now includes an Austin FC soccer ball, the Jenga Tower, former football player Earl Campbell, Lady Bird Johnson, a man with a face mask, and other additions. Thanks for joining us tonight on Reporting Texas TV. If you would like to check out any of our stories or our newscasts, please visit ReportingTexasTV.com. We'll see you next Thursday. Good night.